at these little babies. What you doing? Look at little Lucy. She's catching up. She's catching up to Linus and Charlie. Yes, she is. How many of you are going to be on the van? We're leaving. We're going to, we're going to Chicago. How many are adopted? Okay. Yes, we want all three to go. Look at them. Boy, there's something else. What are you doing there? Lucy, are they being nice to you? Look at them. Ooh, who's growling? Aren't they cute? Oh my gosh. Hi, Kara. Kara, um, Let's see, Kara is in, and Naomi in Colorado. And then we have North Carolina on here, Char Charlotte, North Carolina. There's Lorraine Lukes. Hey, Lorraine, um, we will see you Wednesday, my dear. Lorraine is going to be one of my transport buddies for this trip to Chicago. We're going to be going um, to Downers Grove, which is a suburb of Chicago. And the van is full. Yes, it is, but I think they're still trying to squeak a few more on there. And we have some little enough that I could just put them in my purse. Right? Can I wag you around in my purse? Oh, they are just too cute. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Linda from Wisconsin, and there's Mary Beth. There's Christy. Hi, Christy Guthrie. Lorraine, we have plenty of puppies for you to play with. Plenty of puppies. There's Donna from New Jersey. Um, Melissa um, says hi from New Jersey. Hi, Diane. Boy, we have a lot of people jumping on. And there's Karen from Illinois. And then we have Beth from Ocean, an Oceanside Cottage in Southern Maine. Boy, does that sound refreshing, doesn't it? And Leanne, Leanne, I believe, is going to be in Chicago. I hope to say hi. We hope to see you. Uh, and there's Donna Addison and Rosita. Where's Tracy Nichols? We got to get Tracy Nichols on here. Donna, send her a test, text. Tell her she's late. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, guys. I got to talk to everybody about what we're doing here and tell everybody what we've been up to. Yeah. <laughs> they just can't get any cuter. And just so you know, these three tiny little peanuts are all from Westlaco. And Baco told me about them. She says, come here. I got something to show you. And they were sitting in there just looking at me like, can you take me with you? And she said, take them. I said, I will. I took all of them. There was three in there and then we had more. There's two more in the other room, but from a different litter. I could sit and stare at them all day. They were only about a pound or two when they came in and now they're about four pounds, five pounds, somewhere in there. Well, wait a minute. I don't think you're five pounds yet. You're just little. I'd say four pounds. I'd say that's about it, right? Look at Lucy. There's something about Lucy. There's something about Lucy. Yes, there's something about Lucy. Look at her. Hi, Lucy Lou. And there's Linus and Charlie. Hi. Hi there, Linus. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are like me, but I literally get mesmerized by puppies. I'm late for work sometimes because of the puppies. I just love them all. Okay, so we got a couple things to go over. And, um, hi everybody. What a week it's been. Um, as I said from my last post, um, we, we have a lot going on and <clears throat> We're going to be leaving for Chicago on Thursday. So I have Baco going and Lorraine is going with. So I have two great co-pilots. 
The van is full, 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 um, but there is room for a couple more. Uh, we had to, we kind of pulled back uh, Laredo because he came, when he came in, we started seeing some um, spots on his back. He ended up having a, just a, a bacterial, bacterial infection. So the vet put him on something and they're clearing up. So I think he can actually go on this trip, which will be good for him because as much as I'd like to keep him here, he needs to be in a home. <laughs> he needs to be in a home, just like all these puppies need to be in homes. Uh, we love puppies, but we love them more when they go in their new homes. Puppies are a lot of work. If you're getting a puppy from us this round, um, first, welcome to our family, but I strongly suggest you get a crate and sign them up for a puppy class because puppies, puppies like crates. And you have to learn uh, to, get, to get to know your puppy, um, to make sure they're not gonna chew your shoes and all sorts of stuff that puppies like to do. So they're cute, but they can, they can also be destructive. <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna take one more look. Look at that, say not us, she's telling stories about us. None of that is true. We're angels, we're perfect, we never chew on anything except for each other's ears, yeah. Yeah, what are you doing there? Trying to rip something up? Right? Oh, look at, no, no. See, I just said you didn't chew on anything, silly girl. Lucy, don't do that. Oh my gosh, cute, cute, and cute. So somebody is just telling me there's no sound. Can y'all hear me or is there no sound? Let's see. Let me know if you can hear. Carol says no sound. Well, I'm gonna continue because I can't tell if you guys are able to hear me or not, but nobody is saying you can't. So um, I'm gonna mention a couple of things before I uh, show you Flapjack and some of the other dogs because the van, again, the van is full and we're so excited for everybody that's getting adopted. Right now, um, as you know, we have so much going on in the animal world. A lot of overcrowding in our communities. The rescue groups are all crying. Um, and if you're in a city that uh, has a open admission shelter that's shut down, you know what I'm talking about. Areas like Memphis, well, Memphis has this different issues. Um, Memphis and then El Paso is still trying uh, to clean up from a big mess. Um, I'm seeing it all over and just a lot of, lot of things that I'm hopeful that Tracy's Paws can help with. Um, I received a letter and I'm going to mention some of this to you because um, as I read it, I was drinking something. I almost spit it out because it's just so full of, full of stuff that's not true. <laughs> Hold on. One of our supporters, and I hope she won't mind... Um, that I'm sharing this, her name is Debbie. Well, she wrote a letter to somebody she used to donate to, just questioning some of their practices. And I have to read you one thing because it's just, okay, um, let's see, where is it at? Hmm. So they're trying to explain their their methods for adopting out animals because she pretty much called them out on not screening people and sending animals into the community and not letting them come in the shelter because as you know it is not humane to leave dogs out in the uh, on the streets especially not where we rescue we rescue in the Rio Grande Valley and all over the border towns and uh, it's not the animals down there, um, not only are they dealing with extreme heat, but there is a lack of education down there surrounding the proper way to care for animals, which doesn't mean we need to condemn these people. We need to help them. So, um, and one way you know that is all of our dogs come from that area and pretty much every one of them has some sort of a tick illness. They're not microchipped, they're not spayed, they're not neutered, or they're starved down to nothing after living on the streets. So we don't wanna put them back into that type of environment. Um, but 
This is what best friends said in writing. <laughs> this is, you can't make this up, so I might post this. Unfortunately, this reduction, oh, wait a minute, let me back up. Um, when using a managed approach, comprehensive services are made available to people in the community that may enable them to retain their pets or services are made available to help reunite lost pets with their owners. These me methods result in a reduction of the intake of animals at the shelter because the animals are staying with their families. That's when I spit my, my drink out, oh no. Unfortunately, this reduction of intake has led to a false claim that Best Friends has encouraged the shelter to turn away animals and to abandon them as strays. There is no data to support this claim. Oh yes, there is, <laughs> because let me tell you the data. Right now, um, they are embedded down in the city of Brownsville. And I've been working with those folks behind the scenes trying to help them. And I have recordings, Best Friends calling animal control now mind you they opened it up again about two maybe a week and a half to two weeks ago but i have recordings from there where animal control says we are full we are not taking in new animals either there's a distemper outbreak or a parvo outbreak and you will have to either keep the pet yourself because we're not letting them in our shelter unless they're sick injured or aggressive so nowhere in here does it say anything about that? The animals down in these areas, guys, they don't have homes or they have homes that don't want them or are not taking care of them properly. So we wanna help these areas. We wanna put a custom program down there to um, help them with what they need. We don't have an agenda. Our agenda is we love animals, we love the people down there and we wanna help them. So there's no agenda to meet some crazy no-kill goal by 2025 that's not going to happen. Our agenda is we love these people and we love the animals. So when I read this, I, again, we're, we're going to respond to this um, because either the person that wrote it, and this is what you always got to wonder. Is the, did the person that, uh, wrote, that wrote this response to Debbie, are they so far up here that their feet are nowhere near the ground that they don't know what's going on? Or are they programmed to just cut and paste responses and have no idea uh, what the truth is? So they're either delusional or they're lying or they just don't know, or maybe it's all of the above or they don't care. But this letter that she received is going to be responded to because it is filled with myth, mistruths and very misleading information. So on that note, I'll touch just briefly on, on the Laredo issue and then we're gonna look at dogs because we're not gonna make our page about this. But I will say um, that I do believe that we need to help and the model that these people have in place is not working. Um, it's not working on so many levels. It's not working on the adoption level. It's not working from the educational level. It's disorganized. It's chaotic. It is just doesn't have all the animals, um, their hearts uh, and their well-being. Uh, they're not considered. <laughs> so our program that we're, we're working hard to uh, recommend to people, and again, when I say recommend, we're not selling anything. We just have some recommendations uh, for them that we think that would help in these areas because we know what they need most because that's where we, that's where we're at a lot of the time. So quickly on Laredo, um, we now have, so we have documented proof about what, what happened in El Paso. The outside of El Paso, the neighborhoods are a catastrophic mess. And I talk to those folks daily and the school that they had to, that they're buying with a $27 million renovation is because they have no place to put 
the 35,000 plus strays that they left out in the community. Uh, so we looked at three year over three year intake. So those animals didn't find their way home. They are out breeding in the community, getting hit by cars. So those folks showed us just how dangerous and heartless this fake no kill by 2025 movement is. So now with Laredo, we have a whistleblower there that, again, you guys know I'm not political, so I'm really fumbling trying to uh, understand how all of that works because after speaking at one of their city council meetings, there was one council person that you could tell had been drinking the Kool-Aid. Everybody else was supportive of this gal. Uh, she caught unimaginable things. We have videos, we have internal documents, um, and we have proof that they were running unauthorized experiments on one day old puppies. So instead of this council person supporting her, they put her on probation. So now we have proof that these dangerous groups hurt the animals on the outside of the shelter. Now we have proof that it's also happening on the inside of the shelter too. So we're gonna be working really hard to try to help and come up with better solutions for these areas um, that show love and compassion for all the animals. And as you know, this type of change doesn't happen overnight. We're talking five, 10, 15 years down the road before the fruits of our labor are probably going to be seen. But in the interim, we don't want anybody, any of the animals suffering. Nobody, nobody should be uh, working in a facility that they are forced to watch ag dogs and cats dying of agonizing deaths because they won't euthanize uh, humanely. So lots of stuff going on there. We're also hearing uh, rumors that some of these groups are sending these dogs to laboratories and cats to laboratories. So I don't have that yet, pro uh, proof on that yet, but I'm working on it. So anyway, I just want you to know we're, we're, we're working on this um, and we're gonna make sure that we continue this fight and we hope you'll, you'll fight with us. I do expect we're gonna get attacked. I do expect we're gonna probably have some setbacks because when you are battling a mountain like we are, um, that just typically goes with the territory. So just know that that's probably coming. So on that note, let's go look at some dogs because I've seen enough of what those people have done over the past, oh, two weeks and I'm exhausted from it. Yes, look at you, Levi. Levi, you got adopted, and you're going to be going home soon. Yes, you are. Look, Levi's going to live like a dog. That is our motto. And Murphy, too. Murphy's going to be going home soon. Look at him. <laughs> oh, gosh, they are so excited. Now, little Laredo. Laredo, um, as I mentioned, he developed a little bit of a bacterial infection, but it's clearing up. So I'm going to put you up for adoption tomorrow. Yes, I am. And then we have Pippi. Hi, Pippi. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, she is just a doll baby. And look at Bubbles. Bubbles needs a groom. Look at her. Isn't she cute? She's adorable. Hi, Pippi. Are you okay? She's that typical chihuahua that, that kind of shaky. Hey, who's doing that? Bloom wants me to say hi. Hi, Bloom. So Bloom has a story behind her. She was actually left in a, um, a house, and um, Baco, I believe, had to get her out. There, they don't know how long she was there, but they left her. So she... She's adopted, so I just want her new parents to know, please have some patience with her because she, she gets worried that you're gonna leave her again and she loves to be held and cuddled. Um, so that's, you know, again, that's her backstory. So I can understand why she gets a little nervous when she sees us, she wants us to hold her and then we, we walk off. 
She doesn't want us to leave her. And then I know Zoe's still looking for a home. Hi, Zoe. But I know Dundee got a home. Yes, he's going to be on the bus. Look at that. Hi, Dundee. Oh, he's a doll. And then I know you, Giselle. You got a home, too. Look at her and her big ears might fly home. Are you going to fly home? Look at those ears. Now, Maribel is still looking. Hi, Maribel. Little Maribel is still looking for her home. And Wendy, I think somebody was interested in Wendy, but I think she's still looking too. And then I know that I saw some applications on Wolfie, but I'm not sure if they finalized anything yet. He's a doll. Yes, he is. Now, I know everybody's been wanting to see Flapjack. Hold on. Look at how good he looks. Hi, Flapjack. Look, you can't see his ribs. Look how nice that is. Look at that. Are you a good boy? I'm going to get you a bigger blanket. Hold on. I'm going to get him a bigger blanket. I'm going to get him a bigger blanket, just so you know. So he did end up having a staph infection, but the antibiotic that they originally put him on, he's good to go. So she wants him on it for like 30 days, but she expects that, uh, that leg to heal up just fine. Um, he's using it. He doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to bother him. He's not painful. So, Brenda, yeah. does he shred? Uh, he, might he might. Okay. Well, that's okay. Let, let's let's see if we. Get, I'm gonna give him this. Do you want a bigger bed, honey? Here, let's give him a bigger bed. Hi, baby. Here, here, sweetie. Here, look at that. Look. <laughs> Look at her. Oh, come on now. Hold on. There's Alicia and Vivi and oh, Conrad and Eeyore. Oh, my gosh. And um, Winona. Oh. So which one is, oh, that, that's Shirley. That's Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Oh, wait, he's biting that. Do you think he'll bite it? Uh, he might. Hold on. Sure. Now, he's excited. if he starts shredding, we're going to take it and put another blanket in there. <laughs> Flapjack. Mm -hmm. Flapjack. He's just Look, oh no, he's trying to rip it up. Are you going to rip up that nice bed? Yes, he is. Let's hey. take, no, we're going to take hey. it away. Oh. We're going to put a blanket in there if you're going to do you that. But look how pretty he looks. Look at that. Look, he wants it. I'm sorry, baby. He wants to rip it up. That may be why maybe the morning um, gal took it away from him because it was like shredded everywhere. Hold on. So, yeah, we'll give him a big blanket. Hold on, let's see him. Hey! <laughs> hey, we're not doing this. Look what I have. I have the water bottle. No. Look, you see? No, we don't want to do that. Hey, uh, uh, uh. No, it's time for bed. It's time for bed. It's time for bed. Shirley, you need a groomer. We got to get Shirley groomed. She's been playing in the water. Yes, she has. Oh, I love that schnauzer howl. Can you howl? Can you howl for me, Shirley? Are you playing in the water? Were you playing in the water? Aw, she's, um, this is one of the dogs that we think was a breeder dog. She, um, came in with her sister, Isla, and, um, they look like they had been breeder dogs. Come here, Eeyore. I know. Eeyore, he's our good boy. Yes, he is. 
he got a groom. Look at you, look how beautiful. I'm so pleased with Flapjack. I really, really am. He looks like a million bucks. And he's a, um, he's a younger dog, so I don't have him up for adoption yet because I really wanted to just let the dog decompress, let him, um, you know, heal because his, you know, as you saw, his leg was bad. So the leg is getting better. Um, and now that we know that it's going to be cleared up with this antibiotic, he'll be up for adoption soon. Okay, so let's see who's in here. We had a couple adoptions today. We had um, Dakota go home, and who was the other one? Yeah, somebody else went home today. It was Dakota, and let's take a peek. So our board is thinning out because we're adopting them out. Um, and then again, we have everybody going um, on the trip with us on Thursday. So this is how we keep everything uh, straight, guys. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you a couple more, but also let you know that can you believe that next week september 13th opens uh the early giving for the big give how in the world did this happen and creep up on us this fast crazy right um and as i mentioned and i'll be posting about this we are going to be fundraising for the play yards uh, for the Milton. And anything left over will go towards a new transport van. <laughs> so I'm trying to get some, you know, some quotes together now from the contractor for, for actually four play yards that will, uh, two for each side of the building, and then an area for adopters. We desperately need that because right now, when people come out here and they wanna adopt, it's really difficult for us because we have free roaming dogs in the front, which we don't wanna have, and there's no area for them to go. So they end up going in the back of my house on my patio, and then we have to barricade them in there so um, the other dogs won't bother them. So it's really not, our, we're not set up here yet for people to come out and um, you know look at dogs that they might wanna adopt. So uh, when the Milton is done, thank you to Adam Scripps again. I still am pinching myself over that. I, I it just doesn't seem, I said it a thousand times, a, just a thank you doesn't seem good enough. So if you haven't already sent them a thank you note, if you're one of the lions and you've been with us and you follow the work we do, please tell this wonderful family through Shelly Smith how much we appreciate this gift. And we're going to make sure that they are proud of everything that we do at Tracy's Paws in honor of this wonderful gift. So, so the big give that's coming up early giving next week, but September 20th and 21st, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. We're gonna rock it again, and we're gonna name those play yards after Mr. Adam Scripps, and I will let you know what the goal is going to be after I talk with the, uh, the contractor. It's a minimum of a $10 a donation, and we're gonna be looking for champions again, and what a champion is is somebody that likes the work we do, and you're basically fundraising through your social media contacts on your page for us. So it's a lot of fun. We have contests between the champions. But always remember that any act of kindness is always appreciated. Uh, we have a lot of people on here that can't donate. Um, they might be on fixed incomes or they're just not in a position to, but they can cheer us on or share our posts. Again, all acts of kindness are appreciated. So hold on, we're gonna show you some more. I'm gonna show you two of the cutest little peanuts ever. We've got y'all locked in for the night. Look at this. Oh, they're so cute. Purdy and Pongo, I believe both of them are adopted. Purdy's maybe three pounds, if that. 
She is so tiny. Hold on. Just the tiniest little thing. They're tiny and cute. And they are also from the Westlaco shelter. I remember when they handed them to me, uh, my heart melted. And I just was so happy that we were going to be able to help these little puppies. Hold on, let's see, because I don't want to pet them because I pet another dog and we don't want... I always get worried that, you know, they're gonna get sick because let me just stress, the number one, the number one cause of the spread of disease in a shelter is us. So we do a lot of hand washing here and the, one of the rules is, is if you touch somebody, you gotta wash your hands so you don't go touch another dog. Um, especially not a puppy with a, a compromised, you know, just a, um, an immature uh, immune system. So we don't want them getting sick or possibly picking something up because we didn't wash our hands. So we're really, really careful here um, about that. And we have these three puppies that are going uh, also on the trip. They were all adopted. We have Balto, Byron, and Beethoven. And they cannot wait to get out of this run because let's face it puppies need a lot of exercise they don't get a lot of exercise in here a puppy is not fully vaccinated until they reach 20 weeks of age and then that's when they're supposed to get their last vaccine so two weeks post that last vaccine, then you can be pretty confident that you can go places like PetSmart or the dog park. But up until that time, you've got to be extremely careful with puppies because you never know what's going on on the inside in terms of immunity until they reach that 20 weeks of age. Once they reach, reach 20 weeks of age, you're, we're pretty confident that vaccines at that point aren't gonna have any interference from the mother's maternal antibodies. Maternal antibodies are a protein and they wane over time. That's why your veterinarian boosters your, uh, your puppy's vaccines because they don't know how much of that maternal antibody each puppy receives. So we, uh, most vet veterinarians will recommend that you booster up to 20 weeks of age uh, just so you can have peace of mind two weeks from that day that that puppy is fully vaccinated so don't ever let anybody tell you oh my puppies had three vaccines they're totally fine if that puppy is under 20 weeks of age don't let it's not the number of vaccines that determines immunity it is the timing in which they were given. So don't forget that. Um, and talk to your veterinarian about what they recommend as well. But that's what the guidelines say, right? And these are Wendy's babies. Wendy had, Wendy had uh, 10 puppies. Crazy, right? And they're ready to go home. They want to get out of here. They're not 20 weeks of age yet, so I don't want them running around my yard because I don't want them to get sick or pick something up. I know, look at that. Where are you going? <laughs> yes, very cute. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take a couple questions and then I'm gonna let y'all go. Let's see. If you have any questions, let me know. Or if you just wanna stare at these. Oh, they're up, our oh no, here they are. Yeah, look at that. Let's see her. Okay, uh, Brenda Preston says, I'm so happy y'all got that wonderful gift. We know you'll do the right with everything, every penny for the dogs. Yep, that is exactly right with this group here. Um, we, we pride ourselves on doing the right thing even when it's hard. We've taken on a lot of projects that were a little scary. One of them was starting over with nothing. The other one that hit us in August of 2020 was Chagas disease. We did not know what in the world to do about that. But again, you do the right thing in the world. 
sometimes even when it's hard and it's just, you know, again, it, it, it comes back to you tenfold. And then, and then here we go now, we have uh, a mountain to climb with exposing what these um, extremist groups are doing. Look at, they're like, it's time for bed. They're like tired, Brenda. I know, they're about to go up. You guys gonna go to bed? Look at that. Lucy could fly with those ears. I love her. She was so tiny when she came to me. I want to say she was like 1.5 pounds or something. It was, she was just the littlest thing, right? She's like, I'm a big girl now. And she's even being nice to her brothers. Look at that. There's nothing more beautiful than little puppies. Look at that. And little, like, fat bellies. I love when they have little round bellies, too. Oh, just adorable. Look at you, Lucy. Oh. How many dogs do you have, Mark Simon wants to know. Brenda, how many do we have here right now? Do you know? Oh, shoot, your mom went in the other room. We probably have, like, um, how many dogs do we have on property right now? Like... <laughs> you really want to know? <laughs> I was I was with somebody the other day, and she has a lot of dogs. And uh, somebody, you know, found out they knew we were like crazy dog ladies, and they asked, "Well, how many do you have?" I'm like, "We don't talk about that. <laughs> you don't ask people like us." But I will tell you, we're gonna we're gonna at tell least you. Give at least uh, fifty-seven. Ooh, <laughs> we have them in foster. Okay, so we have at least 57, um, but some are in foster. And some got adopted here. So we always start yeah, out. You know what? That's true. They're still, some are still in the system. So. Yes, and we, we always start off like a little full. Like when I go down to the border and I go shopping, we start off with a lot. And then, you know, we try to shuffle them around, put them in foster care. Some are here, some are there. And then, you know, they get adopted as they become ready. So. It gets a little easier um, as the month progresses. And then when I leave on Thursday for transport, I mean, this place is going to be um, a lot of it cleared out. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Tired puppies are good puppies. Yes, they are. So when we get the play yards done at the Milton, we are going to have a little area with a gazebo for our adopters to come where they can sit at a bench uh, uh, under a, uh, like a little gazebo area and spend time with the dogs that they are looking at to adopt. Um, Ann Liebert wants to know, why don't you pick the bigger dogs? What do you mean, Ann? I got plenty of bigger dogs. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, and I'll also tell you, Ann, that's, you know, uh, that is something that I want to make sure everybody understands right now is <clears throat> medium to larger dogs are not getting the applications that we wish that they would. And um, if you put 20 dogs in a room that were available for adoption of all sizes, the smaller ones would go first. So one reason we do not put all large dogs in our facility is because we would be a large dog rescue with a lot of long-term stays. So there are so many dogs down near uh, the border towns of all sizes that need help and we take what we feel that we can adopt out to quality people to keep our program moving. So I know about how many larger dogs that we typically will be able to move each month and find homes for, and that goes for the medium ones as well. If it were up to me, I'd have a football field and I would have every single animal, dog, large, medium, you name it in there. But I have to be practical and adopt what I know people are applying for and looking for. We do take some long-term stays, and we know that they're going to be long-term stays when we, when we pick them. That's because we don't have the heart to turn them away. Um, but we, do very, we, we try very hard to run this in a way that keeps, keeps things flowing um, 
You know, Lottie will probably be a long-term stay. She's a little pit bull, little squat, squatty pit bull. She has Chagas. And um, so, you know, again, we do our best, very best to pick a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, but the large dogs and medium dogs are just not, uh, they're not easy to find homes for, Anne. I wish they were. If, hey, Anne, if you would like to apply for one, I can um, send you a link. And we'd be happy to send one uh, if we can get, get an application from you. So if you would like to apply, uh, let me know. Okay, let's see. How do you get a dog from you? Mark Simon wants to know. Well, Mark, um, you have to apply and we uh, do everything by um, online and um, we make sure that your application gets approved. So we're gonna background check you and we are gonna look at your references, talk to people that know you and do our due diligence to make sure that you're a good applicant and that you match up with one of our dogs because we are not a first come first serve. So we pick the best adopters based on what the dogs need. Because let's face it, I have some dogs here that don't like other dogs. I have some dogs here that have to go to a home with another dog. So if you apply for a dog that you fell in love with that you want, um, and you don't have another dog and you picked one that needs another dog, we're gonna say, no, that's not the right dog for you. So then you need to look at our transport schedule um, or you can you could either pick up at a transport city, like we're going to Downers Grove. Uh, we'll be there Saturday, September 16th, or you could come here and fly to Texas. We have lots of people that fly into San Antonio and then make the drive out to Hondo we live in a very uh, rural ranch area. Uh, very, uh, it's really, really nice out here. It's quiet. It's a, a beautiful place for the dogs to heal. And we have lots of people that come out here. Um, again, some fly, some drive, um, but everything is done by approved application. Because let's face it, we love these pups and we wanna make sure that they go to the best of the best. Look at that, right? Let's see. Yes, Pam, these babies are safe and sleeping peacefully. It's, it's wonderful. Okay, let's see. So Tina said there are mainly only big dogs available in Australia in the facilities. <sighs> yeah, um, unfortunately where we're at, which is in Texas, there, we have everything here. So um, if you were to spend a day with me down at the border, um, like let's go down to Baco's shelter, everything down there. And if you were to go to Roma, Texas, they don't even have animal control there. So when I tell you they're everywhere, they are everywhere. Every street corner, every place you turn, um, there's cats, dogs, it's just, it's awful. Um, and that's why, you know, again, that we have this uh, side project going on with these no fake, no kill extremists. Like, I want you to think about something and I want you to th really think about this and you'll realize just how, how ridiculous it is. Do you really think that the entire country is gonna be, they have this term that they call no kill, which I think is crazy. No kill by 2025 it's irrational. Anybody who spends any time in the state of Texas, come walk with me uh, down in uh, uh, West Lacoque. Come walk with me down in Brownsville. Come walk with me in El Paso. Go to any city in the Rio Grande Valley and you will realize just how ridiculous that gimmick is. It plays on people's hearts. It makes them donate. That's how they have hooked people for years. Not anymore. So anytime you see um, anything that says, you know, no kill by 2025, tell, tell them to come follow my page. <laughs> I'll, I'll educate them. And I'm only gonna talk about areas that I have direct experiences with, like all these border towns in San Antonio. 
It's not happening, guys. We need a new model, a new model um, that can have sustainable long-term change. Long-term is what, what the key is here. Because ultimately, we want what do we want? We want more people like you and me. We want people that when it's our time to pass the baton, that we have more of us, more of us that are gonna take care of these animals the way we want them to. And right now with what I see down in the, in the border towns, I love the people down there. We just need to bring some education down there. I know one thing I was telling Christy Guthrie and uh, she chuckled, but I've always felt this way. So I'm gonna just share this with you. And I shared this too with uh, Baco and uh, I call the, uh, the Laredo, the other Laredo, um, the whistleblower there, I call her Baco number two because she's pretty, pretty awesome. But I've always loved the Hispanic community for a lot of reasons. I mean, I, I, I love the people. I love the language. I love the food. I think the men are really cute. <laughs> and I, I mean, I've just always loved the Hispanic community, the, the language, the dance and everything. Um, they're passionate people. I mean, really passionate people. They love family and um, I just, again, I just like them. All my books are uh, translated into Spanish, uh, my little children's books. So I'm gearing up to teach that entire community down there the way we do things because I truly believe that if we ever can get the Hispanic community on our side, and over here where they are as passionate about humane care for animals and responsible pet ownership as we are, we will have the most powerful group of people in the world. <laughs> I believe that. I have some really close um, uh, friends, uh, Hispanic friends, and um, <laughs> one of them was dating a friend of mine, right? And, um, he did some things that were kind of irritating and she was telling me, she's like, I don't like this. So I said, well, you need to let him know. He calls me up and I said, I'm gonna tell you something. I said, she's a hot headed Hispanic girl. You do not want to mess with her. <laughs> so that's the type of passion we need um, with Tracy's paws and our crusade to educate and teach down there. I love those people. And I just know that uh, once we get them on board, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So anyway, okay, probably more, more, more information than you wanted to know. And I'll let you guys, uh, I'll let you guys go. Say good night to the little peanuts and we will see you soon. Bye. Don't forget to spay and neuter your weird friends, your relatives, your dogs, and your cats. Bye.